last video, we defined a count abstraction and mentioned that EIP4337 is the implementation we'll be talking about moving forward. The reason we'll be talking about this specific EIP is because it does not require any core protocol changes, which means all of the magic to make it happen happens either off-chain or inside smart contracts. To be honest, when I first started looking at EIP4337, I was a bit intimidated, but that's until I started to break it down. There's a lot of new words involved, but really, we only need to be worried about five main roles. I'm going to be talking about these five main roles in this video, so hopefully it'll be easy for you to form this mental model around the EIP, just as it was for me. Okay, so let's talk about the five roles of EIP4337. We've got a user, a bundler, an entry point, a paymaster, and a smart contract account. The first two, notably, are labeled as keys because they are both off-chain. The last three are smart contracts, which are going to be deployed on-chain. So to understand how all of these work together, let's take a look at a few illustrations. First, I want to point out what state changes look like today without account abstraction. For the most part, users hold on to their own private key, which is going to submit a transaction, usually with some help from a wallet. You submit a transaction onto the chain, and then you will interact with a main smart contract, which will interact with several other smart contracts potentially, right? So this main smart contract could be something like Uniswap, which may call out to other ERC-20 contracts, eventually coming all the way back up to the call stack and making some state changes if the transaction is successful. So what if we wanted to move our account on chain so we're not holding all of our funds inside of the externally owned account or all of our tokens and traits and things that we acquire on chain? If we want to move them into an account, what would we do? What would replace this question mark here? What we would do is we would put a smart contract account on chain so that when we have an externally owned account, we could submit a transaction to the account on chain and then it could interact with something like Uniswap to then make a bunch of state changes on behalf of the smart contract account. The big downside here is that we still have this externally owned account that needs to have its own gas, right? It needs to pay for gas using its own funds. And then we have a smart contract account that we also have to have funds on. We have to keep track of both of these addresses and we have to pay for gas using this externally owned account, even though the majority of our funds and the things that we care about are going to be stored in this smart contract account. You would see something very similar to this in a lot of cases when people use multisigs, which they may use as part of an organization and you have several externally owned accounts that are signing off on a transaction, or maybe they're using it for their own security where they have two of three keys that they need to sign off with. In either of these cases, you do have to worry about having gas in every single externally owned account that's going to make a signature, sign something on behalf of the smart contract account. So how do we avoid being the externally owned account? If we're a user and we don't want to have to hold gas in our account, we don't want to have to sign this transaction, how do we avoid being the externally owned account as the user? What we do is we introduce some sort of a relayer. In this case, I'm going to label it as the bundler, and we'll talk about why it's called a bundler in the next video. Alchemy has produced its own bundler called the Rundler, which is an open source technology that is used to relay these transactions to the smart contract account. So the user, in this case, signs off on an operation, and we'll talk about an operation a little bit later, what it looks like, and then the bundler is actually going to be the one that signs the transaction and submits it on chain to the smart contract account. Now in this arrangement that we see here, it looks like the bundler is paying for gas. Isn't that kind of strange? It's an open source piece of technology that somebody is going to be running. Does it seem a little bit odd that they might be paying for gas? It definitely does. So how do we avoid having the bundler pay for gas in this arrangement? We introduce an, another party here, which is where this question mark is, something else that we're going to put on chain, which maybe you guessed is going to be a smart contract. Specifically, it is going to be the entry point. So the entry point, what it's going to do is it's going to do some gas calculations and figure out exactly how much gas was spent during the transaction to make sure that the smart contract account pays for the gas 
in this transaction, right? So that way the bundler can still act as the EOA and the smart contract account can pay for the gas so that the user does not have to pay for the gas and keep funds inside of their EOA. This is a pretty good arrangement. This gets us pretty far in account abstraction. Of course, there's one other thing that we talked about in account abstraction that is a really useful feature of account abstraction that we want to introduce here, which is what if somebody else wants to pay for the gas on behalf of the user so they don't have to pay for it in their smart contract account. We can introduce another party. In this case, we're going to be calling it the paymaster. And the paymaster potentially will pay for the gas on behalf of the user. They can encode their own set of rules inside of the paymaster smart contract. They could sign something off chain to be able to validate that on chain to say, yes, I will pay for this user's gas. So in this case, in this arrangement here, we potentially have something where the user can authenticate with their key. The bundler then signs a transaction, puts it on chain. The entry point calculates how much gas is uh, accumulated during this transaction. The paymaster pays for that gas, and then the smart contract account can go ahead and do whatever it wants to do. Maybe it wants to interact with Uniswap to be able to trade one ERC-20 token for another. All of those state changes are now available to the smart contract account, and it could do it with the frictionless onboarding of account abstraction. Okay, so let's quickly sum this up. We got the five roles of VIP 4337, the user, the bundler, the entry point, the paymaster, and the account. We've talked about what all of these different roles do. The user authenticates the transaction, so they are going to authenticate it. They're going to sign something which the account will later validate. The smart contract account on chain will say, yes, this user is allowed to transact on my behalf. So this is a valid transaction. You'll notice we have the check mark in the user as well as the check mark in the account. This is this signature is going to be checked on chain by the account before it executes whatever the transaction is going to be at the end of this transaction here. Then we have the bundler that is going to sign the actual transaction, the wrapper around this particular operation, and that's going to be submitted on chain. So the bundler in this case acts like an externally owned account as we know it in terms of Web3 when we're thinking about how this works technically. Then the entry point does this calculation of how much gas is being spent. It interacts with both the paymaster and the account to make sure that the paymaster is going to pay on behalf of this user, or if it's not gonna pay on behalf of this user, it can interact directly with the account, subtracting this out of the account's balance stored on the entry point. We're gonna take a look at this more technically in the next video, so if some of this is still a little bit confusing, or if you just wanna know more information, stay tuned for the next video because we will be diving in much further.